Manchester United have dramatically defeated Liverpool to reach the semi-finals of the FA Cup and the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself. Cappy, come on. <laughs> Manchester United won 4-3 at Old Trafford against our heated Northwest rivals Liverpool. Quarterfinal victory that, especially in the latter stages of the second half, was unbelievably chaotic in the best way possible. Sometimes detrimental to us, but now that it's all over and we can reflect on it in the best way possible, especially now it's over. Big Amagiallo coming off the bench to cool game. Before we break down the thing, let's get into a Question of the day. That was me. Shut up. Now, if you haven't been familiar with the United Twins, haven't got involved in a question of the day, we're going to lay down the law here right now. So we're going to give you a, a question to answer in about 30 seconds, maybe less, maybe more. And the aim is for you to get that answer in the comment section. And we'll give you the official answer at the end of the episode. So let me provide said question. Right. Anna Giallo's match winning strike against Liverpool stands in the FA Cup's record books for what reason, ladies and gentlemen? Once again, we will provide the answer at the end of the episode. So make sure you're staying until the very end if you want to know what the answer to the question of the day is. Now, I thought in, in the game we started off quickly. The home crowd brought it from the offing and I feel the players carried over some adrenaline because of the occasion and the atmosphere. I feel it kind of worked to our detriment a little later on. Well, you know, when everything wore off. But yeah. before that, Scott McTominay comes back into the lineup for a Ninja Casemiro and comes up with another goal this season. I think that's nine in all competitions. Sure, there are deficiencies in this game, but credit where it's due. A few months ago, I was asking the question on the short, how can Eric Ten Hag start to get, you know, Scott McTominay replicating what he does for his national team? For Manchester United, he has shown flashes of that instinct in front of goal, but not on a consistent basis. That may be due to the contrast in positioning compared to his national side. And it seems like whatever him, whatever the coaching staff, whatever Scott McTominay has done, it has been working for the entirety of this season. And he's come up with some big goals here, there and everywhere when he's in the team, whether it's coming off the bench or whether it's starting. So once again, credit to Scott McTominay. I mean, and he, and he could have had so much more this season already too. He's missed some chances. He could have had so much more, but it is what it is. 100% see him and to kind of move on from that we had a strong 25 to 30 minutes from what I remember but for the most part these days I'm, I'm trying to pull put off straight face setting straight face central have to because the question always stands how long will the this performance last will this caliber of performance last Liverpool started to come into the game and, and we got our answer in a big way a lot of possession around the edge of the area and a penetration would happen right at the end of the half. Two quick fire goals from Alexis McAllister and Mohamed Sam. It was disappointing and definitely a shock shocking experience for the players and the crowd. I mean, CM said to me, he saw it coming. Didn't mean it hurt any less, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure all of you were the same. Especially with the mistakes we made playing out of the back. Joe Gomez's challenge on Bruno. Was it a foul? Was it not a foul? Nonetheless, we shouldn't be getting caught in those situations because top teams punish you. Especially with Liverpool's high press. You see that second half? I, I don't even feel like I want to touch on the early stages because from my perspective, we looked down and out. A lot of changes followed, changes of formations, changes to personnel. 
at some points we, we saw Bruno and Anthony playing in defense in extra time. Mm. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, Anthony himself has been questioned and, and still will be until he showcases what Ten Hag believes to be the best version of Anthony. Yeah. But the finish with three minutes to go was a piece of instinctual brilliance. And, I, and that's the only way I can describe it. Touch, swivel, bang. And, and look, the last kick of the game, yeah? He made up for it. But when Marcus Rashford was played in, excellent ball by Christian Eriksen, and he opens up his body, side footer, and it goes wide of the goal. I was in shock. It felt like that was the moment where the atmosphere was about to explode and just like that. The ultimate level of disappointment. I touched on it on my article, cm22ent.co.uk. Go check it out. Link in the description. I was in shock. I'm sure Cappy was in shock. I'm sure shock. everybody watching was in shock. At the end of it all, that was part of the build-up, wasn't it? It was part of the build-up just to... Keep everybody on the edge of their seats. Right, man. No word of a lie. When we conceded that Harvey Elliott goal, I thought it was all over. Game finito. I didn't believe that we had anything left. Much like CM mentions in the, in the second half. He, he didn't see a way where we could have got back into the game, but we did. Maybe one more twist to bring it to penalties and then maybe the man above can answer our prayers. We, we know how we all feel about penalty shootouts. Seen way too much alone away from Manchester United recently and it still doesn't sit well with me. <laughs> it still doesn't sit well with me. This was already an outstanding derby. Yeah? An unbelievable FA Cup classic, no doubt about it. And in the second half of extra time, we all were to experience the true eruption of that Old Trafford crowd hyping me up again. All this talk about a, a new stadium and, and what could come of that, but these are the memories that will be remembered for a lifetime. You see the people celebrating on television, some people in, in tears. That is something that if you're a child, you will carry all the way to being an adult. Man, that's legendary. Marcus Rashford equalises. Shout out to Ahmad for winning the ball back on that one. But him stepping up on that 2v1 and Garnacho's pass was a little behind him. Had to balance himself and, and place the ball perfectly past Kelleher. A dream ending. Such a confusing game. Up and down like a yo-yo. Voice was gone. Emotional damage. And it was all worth it. News. Welcome to CTC News, where I, Chase the Chaos, will be reporting on the latest, greatest, and sometimes not so greatest news revolving around Manchester United. So without a further ado, let's get into the first story. Manchester United women were 2-0 victors against Bristol City in a women's Super League. Two goals from Lisa Nelson in either half secured the three points for Mark Skinner's squad who stand fourth in the table on 28 points. Far behind contenders Manchester City and Chelsea who are battling it out for this season's title on 40 points. Arsenal is six points ahead of United on 34. Six games remaining for the season and a Manchester derby coming up next where we'll be looking for some revenge after losing 3-1 in a reverse fixture. We're also into the semi-finals of the FA Women's Cup, where of course, it will be Chelsea who defeated United in last year's final. Chance for revenge, perhaps? Now, I have got too much news for you guys this, this week. Uh, just returning, you know, return of, of the greatest, the greatest, the star of the show. Next time I will come correct for what I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen is that Manchester United have drawn Coventry City in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Coventry currently stand 8th in the championship today, but completed a sensational comeback in added time to knock out Wolverhampton Wanderers over the weekend, so do not underestimate Coventry City. That has concluded this episode's iteration of CT.
TC News. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of all the news reported. CM, Cappy, back over to you. Until the next time, face the chaos. CTC News. Question of the day. That wasn't me. Shut up. Now, thank you, brother CTC, for your wonderful news reporting over on CTC News. A very, very important section of the video has arisen. It is time to reveal the question, well, the answer to the question of the day. But first and foremost, we need to run back the question. Anna Giallo's match winning strike against Liverpool stands in the FA Cup's record books for what reason, ladies and gentlemen? If you talk here, like on a bit, subscribe to the channel, you respect the tweet now. Back to the video, answer the thing and hop in the chat. Talk question time, question time, question time. So here it is, answer to the original question of the day. Amagello's second half of extra time strike to win the game for Manchester United was the latest goal scored since West Ham versus Kidderminster over two years ago, February 2022. Jared Bowen was the match winner on that day. They won 2 1 in that FA Cup fixture. So if you got the answer correct, slap a one in the chat. If you didn't, feel no shame at all because you should always have a sense of pride for answering the question. Unlike those who, you know, bucked up to this stage of the video and you didn't even try? You didn't even, you didn't even try to attempt to answer the question of the day? Have a bit of fun for once in your life, people. Oh man, but no, seriously, we got to everybody that got the question right, just to make it nice and clear once again. And Magiello's goal against Liverpool was the latest FA Cup match winning goal since Jared Bowens in February of 2022 against Kidderminster Harriet. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the episode. Just a few house cleaning stuff first and foremost. Be sure to check out cm22ent.co.uk. CM mentioned it earlier in the video. He dropped an article. He drops an article after every Manchester United fixture match report. Just going through the game. Have your say in the comments. You can put some comments under the post. So have your say. Share the post as well. Always post it on Twitter. So look out for that one, ladies and gentlemen, every week. And he also does some additional long form content every now and then. The latest one he did was about AFCON and I love that. I love to read it. The African Cup of Nations will be back next year, 2025. And I'm sure you will see CM on your screens too. But that's enough of that. Boy, next few games after the international break, we got Brentford, Chelsea and Liverpool. So we're going straight into the thick of it. We're in a... Uh, we're in the final stretch of the season now, so yeah. Bruno Fernandes said in his interview, the aim is for top four and to win the FA Cup because that's all we have left at this moment of time. It hasn't been a great season by any means compared to the previous campaign where there was a lot of optimism. So we have to make the best of what we have now and then hopefully you know, uh, Ineos will be doing their work behind the scenes to improve the board area and to improve everything that is surrounding the squad so that we can start operating the proper way ladies and gentlemen but that's enough of that shout out to social social media social social show social media platforms make sure you go and follow cm22 ent on twitter and tiktok you'll be seeing a lot of man united content our man united content on the platforms Go and follow CM22 ENT over on Twitch. You'll be seeing CM play some scary games. CTC might pop up there every now and then, but you never sure. know. CM playing scary games. Football manager. Shout out to Japan FC. Little bit of FIFA, even though he's kind of falling out of love with it. I can kind of predict. And also, some like first person cool games. Uh, I'm hearing CM's been getting into Spider Man recently. You've been hey. watching the movies. Latest free in the classic. Okay, okay, okay. So he's been getting into Spider-Man a little bit. So we might see a bit of Spider-Man on stream too soon. But right now it's God of War, Football Manager. 
And I need to get on to you, you know, big man. Well, what's with the inconsistencies? It's time to start kicking out content again. And streaming is a part of that, big man. So this week, I need to see some streams. You should, with everybody on Twitter, make sure you're at in CM22ENT. Hop on stream, big man. Hold him accountable. Join the Discord, the 22's Discord server. Link in the description where everybody in the community can have conversations galore. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I thank you all for coming here and reaching the very end of this video. Make sure you're dropping a like on the video, subscribing if you're new, sharing to your friends and your frenemies. And until the next time, we'll see you lots in our...